Hi, today's session is about persistence barcodes to persistence diagrams. In the last session, we computed homology of the filtration, the complexes in a filtration of a simplicial complex, and we looked at the function or map which goes from one filtration complex to another okay, in homology. So what we had to do was first calculate the homology uh, of the complex. So here's the complex x1, x2, x3, and so on up to xn. And then for each xi, we would calculate the homology. So here it's in dimension j. Once we have the homology groups for xi and xi plus 1, we can consider the map of cycles in xi, cycles in xi plus 1. So that comes from the inclusion map from xi to xi plus 1, which maps simplices in xi to themselves in xi plus 1. Okay. These inclusion maps lead to a sequence of inclusion maps. So up at the top, we see going from xi minus 1 to xi, and we keep going to xi, xk minus 1 to xk. We're computing the homology in each case, and we're seeing how cycles move from one to the next. Now, each of these homology vector spaces is just a sum of Z2s. We've seen that in all the calculations we've done. There's some number of copies. We don't know how many until we calculate it. But we do know that each copy of Z2 represents a cycle. So if we see a copy of Z2, there's a cycle in that Xi for that dimension. If we see five copies of Z2, there are five independent cycles. So what we can think of is that this sequence of homology groups is really a sequence of maps from copies of Z2, multiple copies of Z2 to multiple copies of Z2. Now the interesting thing is that this sequence decomposes into shorter sequences of single copies of Z2. And they look like zero, goes to Z2, many copies of Z2, and then goes to zero. This corresponds to a cycle arising at the first birth time, and dying at the death time. So the same cycle continues. Let's see what that might look like. Here's a schematic decomposition in dimension one. So here we have some number of copies of Z2. We have four Z2s. We start at zero and we end at zero. The zero at the beginning, there's no cycle there. We almost have a cycle, possibly. So when we go from zero to Z2, that means a cycle is created. So in this case, we see an edge added, and this pentagon becomes a cycle. Now, as we go to the right, we're adding simplices. So it could be that we add, for instance, a triangle, a two simplex. Now, this cycle is still there. It still goes around a tunnel through the complex, so it continues. And perhaps it doesn't change the next time. No simplex was added to affect it. However, at the very end, we see on the right, a blue triangle is added. So now the tunnel is smaller, but there's still a tunnel there. Now, finally, at the last step, we fill in the green two simplex. That pentagonal cycle becomes a boundary and disappears. So what we see is no cycle, cycle forms, cycle persists, cycle dies. Now, it's a major theorem to say that the sequence of homology groups is made up of sequences just like this. The N, these Z2 sequences are essentially unique. There's only one way to do this decomposition. So let's move on. So now what we have is that each bar in a barcode represents one of these sequences of Z2s. That first copy of Z2, that will be in H at some in for some subcomplex XB. The last one will be in H, homology for some complex XD minus 1, and it goes to 0 in XD. So the birth time is B, as we have before, and the death time is D. So barcodes summarize this algebraic information. However, they are unwieldy. They're awkward to use. So let's introduce something new. This is called a persistence diagram. So on the left, we have a possible barcode, and we see bars 0, 2, 0, 5, 0, 7, and so on. The number on the left is the birth time. That's the complex in the simplicial filtration when it first appears. The number on the right is the death time. So the first bar represents a cycle born at time 0, dying at time 2. The second bar represents a cycle 
one at time zero, dying at time five, and so on, all the way down. And we notice there's some bars which are identical. So down here we have two bars which start at two and at nine. So that we only have one uh, axis here that matters, that's the horizontal axis, the time axis, or the index and filtration axis. And it starts wherever it begins and it ends wherever we end the filtration. But it could continue and still have all the cycles disappear before the end. The vertical axis doesn't mean anything, that's just an ordering of the bars. And we, you can see we've ordered it in a nice way. The uh, birth times are increasing and within a particular birth time, the death times are increasing. So the better way to do this is to what are called persistence diagrams. So each bar contains the information of the initial point two, say, and the end point nine. So from that, we get a point two nine. So for each bar on the left, we get a persistence point on the right. And you look and you can see, we had three bars starting at zero, they end at two, five, and seven. Here we have zero, two, zero, five, zero, seven. Then we have a bar two, eight. Here's the point two, eight. We have the two bars two to nine that I mentioned before. That gives us a multipoint. Then we have a bar starting at two going to 12, a bar starting at two going to 15, and finally, a bar starting at four going to 17. So here are the persistence points capturing all the information in the barcode. Now a few things to notice. Uh, every, uh, <coughs> every cycle which starts at time zero winds up on the vertical axis. Uh, every point lies above the diagonal. Since we have an index which is increasing across the filtration, that means the death time is greater than or equal to the birth time, so the points must lie above the diagonal in the birth death plane. And we can see we have a multiple multi points. We might have barcodes of the same initial time, same birth time and same death time. That means there are several points at the same location. And that's fine, that still works in this system. Now some other things you notice, we have some bars which are very long. Those bars, for example, the bar four to 17, that's far above the diagonal. So long bars we equate with, with features of interest, that's the same thing as persistence points far above the diagonal. On the other hand, if we have short-lived persistence points, so the death time is not much greater than the birth time, those points would lie close to the diagonal. So for instance, we only have one of those down on the left, we have a zero two. So that one we might think of is not being, uh, does not persist very long, for very long or is not very interesting. Later we'll see in examples where there are many points along the diagonal, sometimes these are interpreted as topological noise. So in the construction of the simplicial complex, we're creating small cycles that last for a brief period of time and are not considered significant. Those would be topological noise, okay? So this is just a summary of what I said. Now, so the thing to, for us to do is to look more deeply into persistence diagrams and that will take place over the next few of these sessions. Thank you.